So who is responsible for your success and failure? You mean a student. I have five different options and I'm sure you would want to say three, four, five. Isn't it? I mean, I would love to say three, four, five rather than one and two. And this is the last name I would want to uh, choose, right? Option two is the last one for my failure. So if you have to pick one, what is it? Yeah, yeah. So it's all, uh, it's all within us. It, it is us who will be responsible for anything and everything. So that's, that's the motto we should follow from, at least from now on, if not, it has happened earlier. Okay. This is the uh, summary level agenda which we are going to cover. Might not be in detail in some of the areas, but ultimately this is what uh, we will be covering. Primarily the uh, true industry experiences, expectations from you guys, especially when you are attending these discussions. And uh, then uh, one of the most important aspect of uh, winning the uh, theme is through communication. And then uh, what are the key gaps? Uh, that we can do it through Q&A predominantly and uh, how the evaluation process happens in an organization and then a sample uh, Q&A session. See, whatever I am going to talk for next two hours, it has nothing to do with TCS. Whatever you are going to learn today for next two hours is, uh, is to face any interview in the campus. Any interview in the campus or even outside the campus. So don't assume that whatever I say is true for only TCS but not true for other organizations which are going to come to the campus in this year. It's true and valid for every organization, every interview which you are going to face from now on. Clear? So these are the uh, expectations from the industry, uh, meaning I uh, assuming that you guys are going to attend uh, IT products or IT services predominantly, if not the manufacturing or the electronic organizations. But uh, these are the key, key expectations from any interviewer or any industry for that matter. Technical knowledge, probably that is where you guys are the best. That's why uh, one of your professors said like uh, 500 out of 600 guys are uh, getting uh, uh, cleared in the written test, but the subsequent step is the question mark. So I assume this is where you are the best, the point number one. And then probably the struggles are there from two to remaining seven to eight points. Okay. Uh, communication skills, attitude, uniqueness, flexibility, adaptability, leadership, professionalism and learnability. At, at some point of the interview discussion, uh, at least some of these qualities, characteristics will be tested by either by HR person or by a managerial person who wants to talk to you or a te technical person or a generic group discussion if at all it is there for some of the organizations. So one of these characteristics will be truly tested. Uh, for each and every one of you, for sure. So I'm, I will not cover the details of each of these areas, frankly speaking, but at least uh, these are the core, core expectations when I am referring to communication, listening, speaking, reading and writing. These are the core, core uh, dimensions which, which will be tested. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, some, some organizations will even ask you to write a, uh, write a uh, paragraph on some of your experiences as well just to test your uh, uh, grammatical or the language grip. That is also a case which we have seen. Or uh, the reading or the speaking capabilities or the writing etc. So all, all are uh, equally important uh, even when you are facing the interview. Uh, especially the listening uh, part of it. Listening and speaking part of it rather than the remaining two. But yes, all four will be required. During the course of the journey, next two hours, we'll, we'll cover some of these aspects, like how each of these is so important in your uh, interview discussions. Okay, I'll not cover the details of those. We can move a couple more slides. Okay, just maybe one of you can read out this. Stand up and read out this paragraph. Yeah, go ahead. Only one, I said only one. Just now I said like one of the key characteristics of communication is like listening, right? So I said one of you stand up and read the paragraph. So we all started in a group which is a habit of uh, our, our, our uh, group. Yeah, go ahead. I could not believe that I could actually understand what I was reading. The phenomenal power of human mind according to a research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in the word are. The only important thing is that the first and last 
letters be in the right place. The rest can be in total mess and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the English does not want us to read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Amazing, huh? Yeah, and I always thought spelling was important. Thank you. Isn't it? Yeah, sit down, sit down. See, uh, there is not even single word which is, is correct, right? With respect to the spelling uh, part of it. But if you see the first and last letters, if they are in right place, and whatever it may be the intermediate juggles, still you can read without any, any issue, right? He hasn't took any, uh, any more time than his usual reading of a standard wording or the paragraph, right? So that's the beauty of the language. So even in moving forward as well, the expectation is not on the spelling part of it, but the gram grammar part of it or the flow part of it rather than the true spelling part of it. It's not a GRE TOEFL for sure. Okay? I'm sure you would have prepared for it and you know better than me. Just see the gap. You all agree? Right? How painful is the second one? So that's where I am I'm, uh, saying that uh, your communication to client should something be like this, but not like be the second one. So that's where we get into troubles and struggles. I'll, I'll show some sample uh, uh, communications which were shared by employees of an organization, whether it is a government organization or IT industry. So that will uh, tell you how, how difficult it is for somebody to understand your perception. Yeah. An IT guy. Since I have to go to my village to sell my land along with my wife, please action me one week live. Okay, go on. As I am marrying my daughter, please grant me a week's live. Okay, go on. An employee of a government organization. As a mother-in-law expect and I am only responsible for it, please grant me 10 days, 10 days live. A student's leave later. As I am suffering from the fever, Please declare one day holiday. As I am studying in this school, I am suffering from headache. I have requested you to leave me one me today. So just imagine if you send such a note to your uh, professor. Imagine. Declare one day holiday. Okay. Now go on the last one. This is all you guys, maybe. Just as reference to your advertisement calling for typist and an accountant, male or female, as I am both for the past several years, I can handle both with good experience. I'm planning for the post. So how is it? He's actually a typist and an accountant. Okay. But in the paragraph over there, he means that he's both male and female. So now you, you understood uh, the, the problems? of communicating your own messages, your own interpretations in the, the language of English. And then just imagine if you send such a communication to your own boss in an IT organization or to your customer saying some, some information or passing on some key messages in such a pattern, one of these patterns. So that's where uh, it, it's even more important in today's world to have better communication, uh, uh, whether it is writing or talking in both the sense and also the listening aspect of it. Uh, so just those are sample uh, use cases or which we have seen in our Esther years. There are a lot from IT especially, but we belong to the same community, so hence we don't want to put too much mess over there. Okay? Sit down. So this is uh, more of self-reading, I would say. Understand your uh, strengths and weaknesses, identify them and then uh, set the target, short term, long term goals and uh, then self-discipline. Uh, this is a, a indicative representation how you should prepare yourself uh, uh, for any, any um, competitive examination or for facing an interview for that matter. Okay? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll rather uh, go through these in the form of Q&A rather than just going through the theory. Go on, next slide. Go on. So probably this is one of the slides which will create some interest among you. 
uh, this is probably with respect to uh, T TCS, but in some cases you would see uh, maybe this stage is not there or maybe these two are clubbed together. But these are the four stages which are predominantly handled by any organization, any IT organization, whether it is four steps, two steps, one step, doesn't matter. Okay? Okay, so let's move to these uh, four stages. What, what we should do, how we should do uh, prior to the interview and on the day of the interview and then conduct during the interview and then the post-interview stages. Okay. You guys are able to read this? Okay. Uh, the, the first one, uh, probably I'll, I'll pick few of them and then go a bit deep in them. Prepare uh, one minute introduction about you, your family. This is a standard representation, but uh, preparation of about yourself and your family. This, this will be the standard question, right? Tell me about yourself, tell me the background. Why you think any interviewer will ask this question? To check the communication skills, stand up and say, because it's 700 odd people. Go on. See, now there is no response. Okay, okay. Sorry? How confident are you? Okay. Body language. Okay, okay. Kind of an ice breaking session. Okay, good. Okay, see, uh, with this question, uh, this will be the first question probably in 99% uh, of the interviews, isn't it? Uh, this is not truly to understand your true capabilities, frankly speaking. This is just to make you comfortable, comfortable in that room. Just to make you comfortable in that room. That's the prime objective of asking this question to start with. First one minute, I'm sure you all will be in uh, high uh, intense, high BP, low BP, low sugar, high sugar, what not. All will be there for some of you, butterflies in the stomach. So, so much of struggle. We all face through that phase. I mean, don't, don't assume that we are not into that stage. We have done that. We fortunately uh, moved on from that stage. So this is just to make you comfortable in that first two minutes. Uh, so that you feel more comfortable, so the true capabilities of yourself can come in the subsequent questions. That's the true motive. It's not to test your, uh, probably the body language or the true communication skills. No, probably not, but predominantly to make you comfortable. More, that is the true intention of most of the interviewers, okay? And uh, uh, say, how do I prepare for such a question? Suppose if I want to, so after 30 seconds probably that is where he will be focusing more on what is the content which you are going to talk, right? So how do I prepare for such a question? See, uh, the discussions will happen from say 9 a.m. Uh, the discussions, 9 a.m. say till 9 p.m. I believe, right? 12 hours journey for the interviewer. But you will probably face 30 minutes of the discussion with the interviewer, isn't it? Max 30, 45 minutes per discussion. Assuming that it is a technical discussion and the guy is spending 30 minutes with you to find out your true skills and then to nominate to the next bench or not, right? So if it is 9 a.m. in the morning, like this, you are all fresh, the interviewer is fresh, he had nice breakfast, no headaches, nothing, he had good sound sleep yesterday night probably. So he is open to listen more. He is open to listen more, he is interested to listen more. 9 a.m., 10 a.m., still fine. 11 a.m., still fine. Then onwards the, uh, the second phase of the interviewer will come in. Okay, then suppose if it is 6 p.m. and I know that I have to cover 20 more interviews, it goes till 10 p.m. Then the third phase of the interviewer will come in. Okay, so you need to play accordingly. If it is 9 a.m., I can spend probably 5 minutes to understand about yourself. 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., then 12 onwards, probably 3 minutes. 
not more than that because I lost my patients. I have covered 30 odd interviews already. Then if it is 4 p.m., 5 p.m., then probably two minutes, nothing more than that because I want to rush through because I want to ask the key questions and then quickly close. Probably I am a bit delayed in the process. I would have spent 30 minutes with one guy probably in actual I would have spent 45 minutes. So I want to cover that 15 minutes in the later half of the day, right? So if it is 8 o'clock interview, a technical discussion, if somebody says, tell me about yourself, if you start spending 5 minutes, then that's a big no. That's a big no. You're turning off the discussion then and there. Done and dusted. Whether you are the topper of the university, topper of the class, it doesn't matter. Because I have no patience. I have covered 25 discussions by then. I will be covering 5 more discussions and you start explaining and explaining my father, mother, grandfather, my college and my region, religion, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So prepare yourself for a 5 minute introduction about myself, a 3 minute and a minute. Clear? Depending on the time you play, whether it is afternoon, 2 to 3 minutes, morning, 5 minutes is still fine, evening, after 6, 1, 1 and a half minutes, not more than that. Clear? So you need to have a script which can fix you into these slots, 9 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m. Clear? That's how you need to prepare yourself. And remaining... Uh, 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 I'm sure we'll cover as part of the uh, Q&A uh, session. On the day of the interview, the D-Day, right? These are some of the expectations uh, from you guys. You prepare and have... Uh, the first point, is that possible at all? The first bullet. Come prepared is fine with good rest and the previous night. Is that a possibility? How many of you can sleep if uh, there is a discussion with say, TCS tomorrow morning? That's good. At least one or two, couple of hands are there. That's nice. But I struggled, frankly speaking. My personal experience was otherwise. Okay. I think second thing will never happen, isn't it? It will never happen, right? But see, uh, sometimes it helps. Sometimes it helps. Uh, uh, just to ease you, just to get into the groom, then there might be a guy who can ask you like, what are the key news today? I mean, just to make you comfortable. It's not that, but you shouldn't be uh, worried about such a question, frankly speaking. Just to make you comfortable, such a question comes back to you. Like today morning we have opened and we have uh, seen a news like Nagarjun University has given 10 days holidays to campus. I don't know, most of you know that or not. We were worried that, okay, whether this session will happen or not. So that 10 day holiday is for the only the campus or the affiliated colleges as well. So just to make you comfortable, such, such questions will come in, not to focus and not to worry much. And this is a trouble, this is a trouble which most of you guys will be inviting. I'm sure your lecturers would have given enough uh, gyan on this, like Baba Ramdev. Is he coming? No? Okay. I'm talking about Baba Ramdev, not the mobiles. Is he coming to AP? No? Okay, tell me tomorrow. Uh, <coughs> what are your electives? This could be a standard question and I would say the experience from our end is like 70% fail to answer this question. 70%. 70%, just imagine. Okay, this is a standard uh, thing, probably you would have spent million hours in preparing your CV, right? Version 1, version 2, version 100, and still there will be some issues, right? So what is that your CV should have? The core, core summary, the key details, it shouldn't have like a million... Uh, commas a b c d e f g h you don't uh, it will cross a to z as well if i am not wrong if there are more letters in english okay so uh, you need to be more precise and uh, the co core coverage of uh, that will be your project predominantly what is the core project which you have done in your final year or 3 2 
and then uh, what is the true expectation of that project which you want to deliver what are the true benefits or what is this all about is the uh, key message you could pass on through cv one and two what are your usps unique selling points why i am so different from rest of 700 guys is what you should portray why i am so unique in this 700 guys i might not be the topper in the class might not be the topper in the university but why i am so special and why you should take me kind of a message should go into your cv two or three bullets like say i organized uh, employability uh, workshop for the unit i led that initiative that's a usp for me i am i have written some paper it's been published in uh, some forum technical forum that's the usp okay i am i am the basketball uh, champion i organize sports event i organize workshops that's the usp so these are some unique skills which you can differentiate with the rest of the guys that's where probably the interest comes back from the interviewer rather than the standard pot pattern about myself my objectives my interests and then my technical skills and my project that is common for everybody right 700 resumes if i take and see 99% matching to each other right so what's the difference what's the usp which you think you are better than rest of 700 rest of 600 500 that's what you put it in your top 3 4 points one and then don't put entire world of technologies which you have read i know c c++ .net fortran pascal oracle microsoft big data small data what not right don't put all that gang whatever you are more comfortable put those i read all these technologies all these languages that is but are you comfortable in answering some question in those languages is the question if somebody is very strong in say c and then you have read c but you are not comfortable in c and you put it that as one of the core strengths in your cv then i can play around right i have 15 years of playing with c versus probably five months of semester education for you guys just imagine how hor horrible it will be right clear so that's how you plan it out uh, uh, your cv the core skills if you put it like each strength then put those and hobbies or whatever you want to put it make sure that those are not contradicting to your actual behavior especially and the project these are the core themes you should cover in your uh, cv and usps predominantly i'm sure some of you might be thinking internally what if, if there is no usp isn't it yeah anybody has that question here 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 somewhere oh nobody has okay except for five this is the least i have seen frankly speaking when i ask this question to an audience this is the least i have seen that okay what if, if there is no usp for me only four guys in 700 odd auditorium so tcs will be struggling right there are so much of uh, uniqueness in the in the associates in the students so how do we pick them right now we will see we will see i'll i'll help you with uh, that uh, that concern uh, it doesn't have to be uh, this last 3 years 4 years uniqueness it could have happened say you in your uh, 12th it could have happened in your 10th or nothing to do with the uh, curriculum or technology but an outside uh, subject also it could be one of them i am good at uh, uh, taking short films suppose that's my usp it has nothing to do with this uh, curriculum this interview but that's a unique skill frankly speaking such skills are also required for it believe me so don't hesitate to tell something which is really unique for you but might not have any true relation in this case because that gives you a different picture you are you are maybe flexible you are adaptable to every different scenario is what you are passing on to the interviewer so think about those dimensions as well you spend some time jot down jot down those points and probably talk to your friends they will help you to find out what is your usp that's the best way to ask frankly speaking assuming that you are not asking this question on the day of interview that day nobody will help you out right how many wants to say i will help my friend to face the interview 
good good i'm the only one probably not truly really lifting uh, rest all is like 6 feet 7 feet tall now right assume that <coughs> there are two guys uh, who are going to face the interview and you guys are best friends and then uh, you know that only one of you will get a job and that will be the last campus interview and if you are not getting it you are out of vigyan without a job now still you want to share uh, the questions which are asked by the interviewer to the next person is the question be true to yourself N no no uh, no mask please no mask how many of you wants how, how many of you wants to share the true discussion points with the second person again full strength or it's it's better it's much better i would say uh, a bit more honest now here bit more <coughs> see if i were there and i know that okay the second person is hari and then uh, if i know that boss there will be only one job and one of one of us will get into say a tcs from vigyan then if i am going to the interview first if i come back there is a 30 minute gap do you ask me that will i share some information insights to hari the answer is absolute no absolute no and i know that that is the last interview in the campus if i am not getting today then i will be moving out of vigyan and i will be fighting in the outside world you know the competition outside world how many of you got selected last year sir out of 600 202 not two selected out of 600 202 not two selected so what is the ratio oh, okay approximately one is 3 4 whatever okay but if you go to outside world when i took my exam one of my friends took exam it was 16000 odd who attended the written test it was way back in 2000 2000 february or something and out of that only 163 were selected in so what is the ratio now 16000 versus 163 160 what is the ratio into 10 into 100 okay wonderful this was i am talking about year 2000 now imagine 2015 if you come out i will be i will i won't be surprised it could be 160000 versus 160 right so if i know these facts now tell me how many of you want to really help your friend assuming that you are the last two guys and one of you will get selected raise your hands still i could see some some masks i would say until unless you have plans for higher education and doesn't want to get into an it now raise your hands still some more mass how many of you seen the movie called mass mask an english movie i am not asking about bahubali yaar chalo let's go okay see the moment i said bahubali there is lot of interest lot of positivity and lot of response back right okay conduct during the interview anything which you don't know out of this yes i want to understand you will say good morning good afternoon good evening that's a standard thing i'm sure you you are all now experts in saying that at least so you are uh, sir sit comfortably that's a challenge but we all can try out our best this is also a concern fr frankly speaking for most of the discussions if you know the answer before the question is finished by the interviewer you tend to answer that question because you want to tell him that boss i know it i know it i know it i want to speak out right away don't worry about asking the entire line okay so a bit have a bit more patience because the question could change at the end right it doesn't have to be the question which you are anticipating so have patience because uh, the interviewer doesn't like if somebody in, uh, uh, stops in in between because ultimately let us assume that he is the king 
and we are all slaves right for that moment that 30 minutes only after that we are all you are king and probably i am slave doesn't matter okay uh, body language and suppose if you are not able to understand a question or you are not able to listen him properly then politely ask him can you please uh, kind of thing use proper wording rather than just bland can you repeat it um this is a challenge again right be honest so i will ask okay uh, rate yourself in uh, your top most language or technology obviously it has to be eight by ten right is that honest answer is the question right what languages you know can you can you pick your top top languages or the course languages or the course skills it will be a b c d e f g h again right is it really so is the question so again we discuss right pick those top two top one it could be one language as well don't worry don't worry if you give 10 a to 10 but you fail to answer one of them that is the worst scenario rather i would say pick one or two top two whether it is c language java whatever it may be or the rdbms or your sdlc software engineering whatever it may be for electronics and other guys they can pick whatever communication related subjects don't worry still you can pick probably one it related subjects and one related to your core learnings okay how do you get this quote examples from the industry and industry leaders newspapers internet google sorry websites company websites your brothers sisters uncles aunties in it industry uncles like us okay this is one other uh, critical aspect uh, i'll emphasize bit more on this point uh, representing through a picture or something rather than just explaining for hours together okay that's also an important uh, aspect when you are covering the 30 minutes about if you want to show something if you want to explain something explain through a picture draw a use case or the flow diagram or the architecture of your project and then explain that makes lot of difference versus simply explaining about your project clear that makes lot of impact i mean i would say the success of that question if you represent through voice if you represent through drawing a picture it makes probably 80 percent better representation through a picture and when you are explaining rather than just talking and talking and talking clear so use use the resources if it is not there you ask him give me a paper and pen i will draw the flow diagram i will draw an architecture then explain that makes a lot of positive impact assume that you are we are you are the topper of uh, computer science uh, class from this university but the other guy who is in interview panel has has no background of say some subject or you are from mechanical he is from comp science right then whatever you are going to talk do you think he will truly understand until unless it has some it flavor no right if it is a mechanical device and electrical device or electronics devices do you think he will understand the way you anticipate your ba- your professor understands no right so that's where draw and explain will make some positive sense one and two if he is not able to understand you could you could see the reaction at least at least in some cases boss is not able to understand the true meaning of or the true complexity or the true benefit of what i am talking about my final year project so how do i explain such a case right because he is not the same uh, degree right he is not mechanical probably he is not electrical he is not electronics so how do i explain my final year project in a better way use the flow charts or the architectures is one and two try to use layman's terminology rather than using too much of technical uh, wording can i use bit of non technical wording use the layman if you have to explain your project to a guy who doesn't have any education how do you explain think about such a case if i have to explain about my project to a farmer a milk boy how do i do that just think in that dimension as well so that at certain point of time you realize that the other guy is not able to understand anything at all about your project 
there are lot of such cases believe me so if you can go one level up and explain them in non true technical languages still it makes positive impact or draw a picture draw a flow diagram and then explain then why it is so unique or what is so special about that project if such a point is covered as part of your explanation that makes lot of positive impact why why you are doing such a project what so special is it not done 10 years ago ask yourself is it not done 10 years ago why it is so special what is that uniqueness i want to explain to the interviewer why why this project is so special why it's unique those aspects if you can cover while explaining your project that makes lot of difference otherwise if you talk about pure technical terminology without giving the true business benefits true benefits of that project to the society or to the campus to the it fraternity doesn't make any value at all believe me all your efforts are are gone wasted so think about so those uh, those cases what is the benefit to the industry why i am doing such a project now i mean i'm sure any project which you are talking now would have been done 10 years ago or 5 years ago or 15 years ago right very few cases are very unique and new i don't think we can find every use case as a unique use case right then what's the difference is it the technology used in today's world is different from 10 years ago and what's the true benefit of the leveraging that new technology versus the previous years one right if you can highlight those two three unique business benefits about your project that makes positive impact clear hari okay interview is done all are happy then what should you should do what you shouldn't do okay don't ask uh, your placement officer like what is the result what is the result what is the result am i in am i in am i in right what is the pay what is the pay what is the pay and where i'm going to get placed is it guntur or is it somewhere else in the north or south right 